The Steps Hip Spiker Care DVD is made for parents and carers of children in Hip Spiker Cas. They are a series of mini videos which cover aspects of looking after a child in a cast. The videos are examples of how real families coped with everyday tasks of looking after a child in a hip spiker. They are not meant to be fully comprehensive and cannot tell you everything you will need to know about hip spiker care, but hopefully they will reassure you that solutions can be found to many practical problems. Remember that it is best to contact your healthcare professional if you have a problem you cannot solve. Parents, carers and healthcare professionals have reviewed these videos. Um, I mean, clothing can be quite an issue with them. I think we're very fortunate because we've both got little girls and girls are very easy to dress. Um, one thing that you've got to think about is the plaster can come up quite high and you don't know how high it's going to come up until they come back from plaster. We were expecting Bethan's plaster to come all the way up to just under her arms from photos that we'd seen of children in plaster, but we've been quite lucky in that it's, it's actually only round, around her waist. But because of that, we had sort of deliberately bought oversized t-shirts and oversized dresses, bigger, one size bigger than she is, to make sure everything fitted over. And as I said, it's, it's summertime at the moment, so we've been really lucky that just big summer dresses. So I've, I've brought a couple, because I thought you might like to just have a look, but that's, I mean, Bethan's three and a half, so that's like an age four dress. Um, and that just fits really easily over a plaster. And thankfully, sort of little dresses like that are all in fashion at the moment. So she has oodles of, of dresses, which have very kindly been bought by all our family in preparation. And when people were asking us, we just asked them to buy for a size bigger than she is at the moment. And the nice thing is just, you know, keep an eye out. You want really full skirts so that they do stretch over. And it's worth just trying it on them beforehand because you just want to make sure they've got that extra little bit of width at the top in case the plaster comes high up. Um, as I said, we've been quite lucky. It comes up to our waist, so there's been plenty of room. Um, and I deliberately kept them all to one side so that she had lots of new clothes and things to look forward to when she came home with her plaster trousers. Um, the other thing is just because it's summer, that she's so hot in her plaster, she doesn't need an extra vest on a, or a t-shirt underneath. I just put the sundresses on her. Um, but if she goes out, then we've, we've tried to just get nice, easy little cardies. And rather than sort of jumpers, just something that she can just wear around her shoulders and put her arms into. So everything's just really easy to tie and get on and off her. And any of her cardigans have just got sort of a single button at the top rather than lots to do up just for practical purposes. Um, and we haven't even found that she's needed to have socks on um, because it's just been so hot. So we've let her feet out because they get quite sweaty in plaster and you don't realise. And as far as do you need to cover the plaster up, no, you, you, there's, there's no need to. The only time you'd, you'd need to is if you were going out in the rain, you'd need to put some sort of um, waterproof coat or cagoule or something over them. Um, but no, you don't need to cover them up. And to be honest, you're best having as little as possible. My mum was hell-bent on making me some little knickers to go over a plaster that you didn't see her nappy. And as soon as I'd spent a few sessions changing her, I was just like, please mum, don't bother, because it's just another thing to have to fiddle around with when you're trying to quickly get, in, get her on and off a bedpan. So we've, we've just done without. And nappies, they've got little pictures on them. It doesn't matter if you can see. And even, I, I suspect, um, Sophie, that your little one is, is probably not, not, um, not needing nappies at the moment. But it's, it's nice to have something just in the hole that they cut out, just so that it, um, you, you cover things up. So a nappy is, is as good as anything. And they're, you know, they're all colourful these days. Um, as far as night time, again, we just bought some bigger size. These are even bigger. This is an age seven t-shirt. So we, we, we've just got some nice big t-shirts and that's all she wears. Again, no vest, just, just a t-shirt over the top. Um, I did look at um, getting some leg warmers. I mean, you can see the weather's been so hot, I've not even got them out of the packet. But last time Bethan was in plaster, it was in the winter months and her little leg um, on the unaffected side um, was exposed from the knee down and that used to get quite cold. Um, so we just got ourselves some, some leg warmers. <laughs> clothing, yes. We're um, <clears throat> finding clothing to fit 
around her is obviously easier if you've got a girl because it's just lots of big flared skirts and dresses. All the tops still fit her fine and it's just finding a, a, a skirt in a bigger size. Um, and leg warmers is the, the thing that we found most useful because her right leg is only plastered to two above the knee and I can't get any trousers to fit her so to keep that leg warm we've got, she's got lots of different coloured pairs of leg warmers. Um, um, so yeah, leg warmers, knickers and yeah, loads of flowery dresses and skirts. How do you put a pair of pants on, on her with her legs like that and the bar in between and found out that the best way is to take the sides off and put ribbons on and then you, you tie them on. And then the way I do it with Bethan is I get her onto my knee and then she helps me by holding onto the radiator. Here we go. Let me bend down. Now, Bethan's going to hold on there for me. Um, you, you bump the donkey. I can't bump the donkey, not with you at the moment. You can't Can you it. jump in? Mm -hmm. Can you jump oh, in? Not at the moment. I did try putting a dress on over the top of her when she was lying down in bed, but I just found it was such a difficult manoeuvre and all her dress was getting rocked up at the back. So I just tried this one day and it seemed to be the easiest way for me. And then what I tried to do is I've got everything ready so I can just go straight downstairs. So we've got a chair set up downstairs and off we go to start our day. All right, arms across. Here we go. We didn't do our circle. So I think one problem is what do you do with little boys when they're in these plaster casts? And it's obviously more difficult. One of the things that I remember when we were in plaster with Bethan was that there were a couple of um, boys on the ward who were in plaster casts and they were about eight or nine years of age. And um, what their parents had done was they got football shorts for them and they cut down the side of the shorts and then they'd um, attached, uh, I think it was Velcro all the way down. So they were able to pull them on over the plaster and then they just Velcroed them up just to keep them decent. The other thing if your child's a little bit smaller is um, vests which um, have poppers underneath because they can cover up the nappy, they keep the nappy in place and they also stop things from going down into the plaster. Remember, you are not alone. When you want information, advice and support, our helpline team are here to help you. No matter how big or small your concern, please email or telephone our helpline. Get instant access to information 24 hours a day via our website where you can download our advice leaflets. You can also visit our online chat forum which provides a fantastic resource of helpful tips and practical advice written by parents who are coping with a child affected by hip dysplasia.